Hey everybody, it is March 6th, 2013. My name is Dan Boole. I'm president of 65 Amps in Los Angeles, California. Coming to you today from my office. Um, still trying to get my sound rig set up, so I'm not going to play any guitar to get today. I really apologize for that. Um, trust me, I'm trying. I'm just so overwhelmed with work that it's been hard to get going. But uh, so anyway, Today, I posted some stuff on Facebook, uh, some topics that you guys wanted to talk about. So I think we're just going to have a nice little technical chat today. For those of you watching the recording, there's a chat window here that I'm responding to as well. And we do the show every Wednesday at noon Pacific time, local time here in Los Angeles. Um, so I highly encourage you to come on and participate if you have... Um, any questions and usually when I have guitars on we're playing I'm showing you amps it's nice I can interact with you guys instead of doing like a canned performance um, I like to sit here and play live and you guys can throw curveballs at me and we have a good time it's really very fun I hit a lot of clinkers um, we goof off and try to make it like you're hanging out here with me playing guitar um, Foosh asked a good question, which, um, uh, gets asked a lot and I think we'll address that first. Uh, where did the 65 come from? Is that the year you were born? Yes, it's true. I was made in 65. Uh, it, that's kind of part of it. The, when we were building the first amp for Peter, you know, a lot of people are like, well, what are you going for? I said, I don't know. I really like the sound um, of little amps cranked up really loud. Uh, I think that's really cool. I mean, I like big 100-watt stacks as well, but um, I really, really wanted to capture the sound of that. You know, little amps pushed hard. I really like that sound. And I'm a mid-period Beatles guy, and... You know, maybe I'm just kind of stuck on the sounds of 65 because that's when I was born. Um, so 65 worked. It was going to be a temporary name until we came up with a real name. And for those of you that don't know, let me show you the some of the cues on here. Now this is an Apollo, which only has two vents, but our big ones have four vents, four-fingered vents. That's the taillights off my 67 Mustang that I used to have. Um, the logo is Speed Racer from the 60s, if you guys recognize that. Um, we just changed the number to 65. And the facade that's on our combos, that little split window thing, is literally, ah, here come the ads, um, is literally I took a three-dimensional picture of the rear, rear window of a split window Corvette and laid it flat. And that's what it is. Um, so long answer to a short question and you're getting ads I'm sorry so now that we're recording I know there's some guys that just logged in let me repeat again I tried to upgrade my Ustream account today it didn't work for some reason so I didn't do it in time so maybe it's partly my fault um so you're going to see ads today. I apologize for that. Um, yeah, I'm kind of a car guy. I like 60s muscle cars and hot rods. I built a couple when I was a young man. Um, I didn't stick with it. Kind of got it out of my system. Um, yeah, the ads are going to be frustrating, man. I really apologize, but... I have to live with it once. Um, so, uh, what I said after the logo, oh, the, the window on the combo cabs is literally a two-dimensional drawing of the split window Corvette back window from the 60s. Uh, hey, Chell. Welcome. Welcome from Sweden. Um, well, I'm just explaining to people that... Um, you're going to see ads today because my Ustream account's messed up. 
so I'm sorry. It's been like a year since we had ads on the account or more, but Ustream's not processing my account correctly because I owe them. Here's the text. I'll post it again just for fun. Oops. I gotta get my, there we go. This is my balance with Ustream. 0, 0.0. It says, please update my credit card, which I did. Uh, and they haven't processed it or something. They know that I don't owe them any money, which is cool. Don't get upset at the ads. They're only 30 seconds. You'll be okay. So, man, we have a big crowd on today. I appreciate you guys so much. So, uh, let's see. Let's talk about some 65 stuff. We are making cabinets like crazy, having a little hard time getting them covered. It's difficult. Right now, we have over 40 finished chassis sitting... Uh, Hi, Mickey. I did get the L5. Thank you. Um, I don't have it yet. It's still in Michigan, but I paid for it. Um, uh, we've got over 40 odd chassis sitting around waiting for cabinets. It's very frustrating. So if there's any of you guys waiting for your 65, it's probably built. Um, we're just waiting to get all of our cabinets covered. So that's kind of difficult. Um, it's, you know, we're uh, still transitioning. We've only been here nine weeks, so we're still new. You're waiting to pick up Mir L5 too? Oh, you bought one right on. Excellent. Excellent, excellent, excellent. But uh, anyway, so uh 65's rolling along we're making chassis like crazy uh but we're getting send those chance yeah fantasy amps anyone okay so yesterday i posted on facebook and uh, on the fans of 65 amps page which if you guys are not on the fans of 65 amps page go over there and sign up um um because I post stuff on there that I don't post everywhere. So there's also a lot of good interaction of 65 owners there. Um, what is the best wood for a good solid cab? What do you guys use? We use Baltic birch. It comes from Russia. It's old growth birch. The Chinese birch is okay, but it's a lot softer. And um, we use Baltic birch with joints, proper joints, not just butt joints um, and it sounds the best to me because uh, I'm a big fan of British tone and a lot all the Marshalls and Voxes and Watkins and High Watts and you know Selmers everything that came out of Britain was made with Baltic birch with finger joints or half blind dovetail joints and that's part of their sound they're snappy you know, fenders are made with pine. Old fenders are made with pine and finger joints. Then they move just to a regular butt joint later. But um, the pine is a little warmer, woodier sounding. Different thing. Equally as good, just different. Um, suits a fender circuit better than a Baltic birch cabinet. So anyway, I posted these questions on Facebook yesterday. Um... Some of them were serious, some of them weren't, obviously. Um, what is the future of the amp world? Number two was tell me what your fantasy amp would be, but not just a copy of an, art, an old amp that you can just go out and buy. Why would I make a deluxe? Just go buy a deluxe. Um, what is 65 not doing that you wish we were? Um, that's a good question. I like that one. Uh, number four is probably 
even better. It said, when is the pasta actually done? When is that done? I can never quite get it right. Uh, pink Paisley, that's a good option you bring up there. And number five, last but not least, Bieber? Really? How did that happen? Bieber. Ugh. So, anyway, um, I got a few topics here written down we can talk about. Um, oh, you don't throw Bieber against the wall until he sticks? Yeah, that would work. It says, I wish you had an amp with a bit more gain just to have it all covered in one amp. Well, I mean, the producers have a lot of gain. I don't know how much you need. Um, they're also extremely uh, pedal friendly, so you can just put a booster in the front and it's going to break up very naturally. Hang on one second. I think my sales guy. Hey, Rich! People out here making noise outside my office. Um, so on the Fantasy Amp, we had a lot of responses on that. Um, there's certain hard limitations you have in making an amplifier. Uh, one of which is cost. Um, there's just no way to build a great amp cheaply. Sort of like a car. You know, if someone sold you a car that was brand new and it was four thousand dollars you gotta assume it might not be that great just like if someone sells you a brand new amp and it's four hundred dollars um, safe to assume it won't sound that great hang on one second hold on hey I'm doing my show can you shut the fuck up it's Wednesday at noon how long you worked here well, you better. You better. Bullshit somewhere else. We're kidding. Um, uh, yeah, there's a lot of assumptions um, that people may. I'm kidding. I, those are joking. I'm not really yelling at them. Get off my lawn, you little bastards. Turn that music down. Back in my day, we never, kids didn't act like that. <coughs> Choked myself doing my Clint Eastwood voice. Um, so a lot of guys said, make a great sounding amp that I can afford. Okay, well, I appreciate that. Gear is expensive. Uh... A surprising amount of guys said, uh, uh, give me one for free. Um, uh, what am I drinking? Arizona tea. Green tea. Oh, my lights don't look very good today, do they? For some reason it looks very dark in here. Um... And then, yeah, there's lots of questions. Seems like guys want to have big tube sound in their living room. Um, and I just got to dispel that right now. There's no way to do that. The smallest power tubes you can get are EL84s. And they are... Um, they are, uh, they're loud. Tubes take a certain amount of electricity to work. There's a hard floor, like you can't turn them down to living room or bedroom levels. But also, even if I could, there's a certain response your brain has um, to the air moving. You know, your ears adjust things. Your brain has natural compression and all those things. And you can't really do that at low volume. It just doesn't work. Um, yeah, I, mean, I know there's a lot of guys making little amps, but 
I don't really think they sound correct. Uh, Les Fenderson brings up the axe effects or a line six, and I tell you honestly, I think that's what you have to do. I mean, when I lived in an apartment, I had a line six flex tone in the 90s. For that very reason, it sat right in front of my Marshall because I couldn't turn my Marshall on in my apartment. The minute I cracked it open, it was just too loud. Um, adjustable gain trim from... Well, yeah, they have a gain trim. It's called the volume knob. Um, but, yeah, there's... Um, it's kind of hard. We get into another thing. Um, we would get into another thing when you do that. Um, and that you can't put too many features in an amp um, before they all start to suffer. You know, we have a joke here, like, if your amp has more than seven knobs on them, you're one of them. Um, uh, there's guys that do that and you can see how well it turns out I mean there's a lot of guys that make amps that have 24 knobs and 16 switches on them and most people find one sound they like and use that uh, because when you start doing all this um, it's, uh, it's hard to do they don't sound very good um, and trust me, there's a lot of really, really, really smart guys in this business that go for that and they can't pull it off. Um, so I understand that you'd want it and I think it's a fair desire. I'm not, um, I'm not putting you down for it. I just, it's kind of hard to do, you know, that's, I want a Ferrari that I can drive to work. Well. That's kind of tough. Um, I want a NASCAR to take my kids to school. Probably not realistic. Um, how about two 6v6s with an EF86 and a 12AX7? Maybe a bump. Yeah, we have that. It's called the Ventura. It's a 12AT7, but you can put a 12AX7 in there. And it'll gain up a lot more. But um, what about using non-traditional tubes to allow for smaller size? Um, well, there's two problems with that. That's a, that's a logical question. Um, the, the main problem with that is um, they're hard to find. And if I'm going to make an amp and if I want to sell 500 of them, where do I get that? Um, so, and a lot of guys brought up attenuators, uh, you know, we have our master voltage, which sounds way better than an attenuator, way better than any attenuator does, um, because the tubes are still working correctly. Um, hi Van City Dave. Um, Um, so it's just kind of hard to do. Um, honestly, I think if you want to have the sound of a big amp in your house, the Axe Effects is a great way to go. Um, cause that's what a tube amp's going to sound like at that volume anyway. You got to move some air to get some thing and the axe effect sounds okay it sounds like a really good recording of a guitar um, doesn't have the dynamics of a tube amp but um, it sounds like a good recording of a guitar which is what it is uh, same with the Kemper they sound pretty good you know they don't interact with the pickups and the strings like a normal amp does um, but it's good Oh, okay. Egan, Egan. What is the main difference with your master voltage and attenuator? Um, yeah, okay. I'm going to get to the reverb subject after this. Um,
um, the attenuator is a huge load resistor put between the output transformer and the speakers. So it's just added weight. Uh, and that makes the tubes break up. It just shunts a lot of the signal into that resistor and not much of it gets through. So you can crank your amp up really loud so it's working really hard. Um, and then you get a lot of distortion. But what you're actually doing is beating the shit out of your amp. Um, you know, the transformer is it's a signal, you know, an AC signal like that. And it's going like this. Do, 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 do. And you just put this huge resistor in the way. Um, it just goes, ah! and then it starts to break up. And then you also lose your clean sound. So your tubes are going to last as long as they would if you um, just ran your amp on 10 all the time. Um, so there's that. Uh, where our master voltage, what we're actually doing is dropping the voltage that the tubes have access to and we're letting the current rise in the circuit so they work correctly. So we're, we're decreasing the potential of those tubes. So they still act exactly the same. You still have your clean sound and what you're doing is you're actually increasing your tube life dramatically versus killing your tubes. But also I just think sonically it sounds way better. Um, but an attenuator, the best analogy, you know, we were talking earlier, I'm kind of a car guy too, so the best analogy is, is if you're saying, I want to floor my car all the time and squeal the tires and do all those sorts of things, but I can't do that in town because I get arrested or it's dangerous. So what I'm going to do is put a cart behind my car with 50,000 pounds on it so that I'm just going to squeal the tires just to take off from a stop sign. I'm going to have to floor it. That's what you're doing with an attenuator. Um, all attenuators are the same. You take the signal from the output transformer and kill it. And then you just let a little bit of it through. And But that's what, that analogy is what's going on with an attenuator. Um, it works. You get distortion at low volume. But tell me honestly, does it sound the same? I mean, I never think they sound that good. Uh, yes, I want a Lamborghini Countach that gets 38 miles per gallon. Not going to happen. Um, Someone, Nick, here just wrote, is there any way to make a lightweight twin? No. you got to have big transformers to do that. Um, so, you know, it's... I get it. You kind of want this and have that. It just doesn't work that way. Um, plus, with an attenuator, you just don't have a clean sound. There's no clean sound. I mean, uh, yeah, Justin says a lightweight twin can use neodymium speakers. That'll take some weight out of it. So it'll be 78 pounds instead of 95. I don't know if that's really a lightweight amp. Hey, Fonzarelli. How are you, man? And Dirty59 says correctly, a big part of the sound is moving air. There's a physical attack that you get from moving the air. Um, so if you don't have that, it's not the same experience. I get it. Everybody kind of wants, um, their cake and eat it too. Uh, but that's just impossible. And like I said earlier, there's a lot of really, really smart guys in this business. You know, like Randall Smith at Boogie, brilliant guy, Bruce Egnator, very, very smart guy. Um, all these guys and they're trying to do that stuff for decades and you know Peter Dietzel uh, you know those guys Reinhold Bogner and they're still making amps with four EL34s and big transformers in them because that's the only way to get out the sound 
It's the laws of physics, I think. Um, you can you can kind of you know you can um, you can reduce the overall volume, but it's still going to be loud, you know. Uh, yeah, our master voltage does a pretty good job of getting you there, but it's never going to be like I want to sit down and play along with you know my TV. Um, you're going to have to go solid state to do that. Um, will I do a red line producer or a PCB one? Not sure yet. Uh, right now we're still just getting this transition going, so I, I don't have any concrete plans. Uh, there have Dirty Fifty Nine says I think there could be a cab speaker innovation to maximize the amp speaker relationship. There's that flux tone thing uh, where the guy reduces the efficiency on the voice coil on the speaker, but it doesn't sound right, you know. If you want to play electric guitar, I mean honestly, when I play electric guitar in my living room without an amp and the television's on, I can play along with the TV and hear myself fine. I don't know how an amp would do that. You know, I'm and I'm hearing just the strings. Um, it's a uh, single-ended amps. What's the maximum output? Uh, I think when you're single-ended, six L six or EL thirty four. I think it's about eight to ten watts, maybe twelve. Single-ended stuff never sounds the same, though. Push-pull has a sound that you can't fake with single-ended. Um, so. Yeah, I get it. I mean, it's the car analogy is the best thing I can think of. I want a dragster, but I want to take it to work. Um, I don't think that's realistic. Um, you know, the dragster is fun because it does a quarter mile in three seconds. And that's what good tube amps do. But you can't really drive that around town. Um, I get it. I mean, trust me, I want the same thing. I understand completely. I want the exact same thing. I'm just being realistic. You want me to grab a guitar and just pick? Um, I don't know any of Steve Carr's amps other than I know Steve Carr and he's a really, really nice guy. Um, so, um, I don't know anything about him, sorry. So let's go on to reverb. Um, I get a lot of requests for reverb and I've kind of done my research on this and I'll tell you why I don't do reverb on my hand wired amps and there's a couple of good reasons. Um, the main reason is it'll raise the price on the amps about 400 bucks. For me to do it correctly. Um, it's, uh, how do you guys keep asking for 5 watt amps? Buy an Elvis and turn the master voltage down. You have a 5 watt amp. Um, but the, putting reverb in an amp kills the signal. And the way reverb works is um, you, you create this nice big signal. You squish it down to literally 1 one hundredth of the size that it is and you run it through a spring. Um, and then you reamp it again back out and it just never sounds like if you have a deluxe reverb the non-reverb channel sounds better if you have a super reverb the non-reverb channel sounds better um, that's because it's not going through all that reverb circuitry you know if you want reverb then it doesn't sound as good but if you just want guitar tone uh, the non-reverb channel on Fender reverb amps always sounds better always I mean, it's not even subtle. It's a different sound. Um, at the, the reverbs that I've tried, I've made a parallel reverb. Um, 
and it's it's good but you guys are one step ahead of me here talking about pedals um i can never make a spring reverb that sounds as good as a strymon blue sky and there's just no way around it like i can i couldn't do that and then plus reverb pans are more annoying than tubes um i couldn't make two that sounded the same but so that's one part of it there's a technical sort of reason i totally yeah i've thought about putting a digital reverb in i'd have to license it from strymon and I've talked to them about that. And they're not real open to it right now because they're selling way more pedals than they make. If their sales ever level off, they might be more open to the idea. Um, the other thing about reverb is most guys don't care about it. The guys that do, they scream really loud. I mean, they they make a lot of noise about reverb. So... I've done several surveys on Facebook, some of them directly from me, some of them from other people so they wouldn't be tainted by what I said. Um, and it turns out that about 10% of the customers want reverb. And so the 10% that want it um, really, really want it and they're very dead serious about it. And I can tell you straight faced. Go buy a Strymon. Go buy the Wampler. A lot of people like the Wampler. They're getting better and better every year. And if you like them now, wait till next year. There's going to be five new pedals um, that, that sound great. And you're not going to beat them. So, you know, I sell really expensive amps already. And to go, okay, now the producer went up to... $3,800 for something that only 10% of the people really want. Um, I don't feel good about that. You know what I mean? It's, it's, uh, it's hard to do. So I hope that answers your question. I'm not saying you're bad for wanting reverb. I don't mind reverb. Um, it's just not very practical to put in an amp anymore, I don't think. And I know guys did it forever. That's because there really wasn't a good alternative. But now there's great alternatives that you're not married to. If I build you a reverb and you like it, and then three years later I come up with a better reverb, or these pedals now get so much better, um, then uh, you're stuck with it. Instead of just going, hey, I'll get the new Strymon next year or two years from now or whatever. Or the Lexicon or the whatever. You know, all these people make really good reverbs. And I think they sound better than anything I can do with a tube in a spring. Definitely. Uh, hey, Steve, how are you, man? Um, plus, you know, reverb's a very subjective thing. Uh what compressor pedals do you like on the 65? Um, there's two that I really like. I like the Jangle Box. If you know that, it's a boutique thing. It's really good. Uh, and I like the Strymon OB-1. Uh, Andre Mack, I, I'm going to disagree with you on that. Um, Andre Mack says... The downside with time-based effects pedals is they don't work in front of a driven amp. That's not true. Let me tell you some notable guys that run their echoes in the front of their amps. And they do pretty good with them. Jeff Beck. Eddie Van Halen. Jimmy Page. Eric Johnson. The Edge. Those guys work. I do it. Steve Lukather. That's right. Um, yeah, I like to use a little compression on stage. Just a little bit. So that when you're playing soft stuff. It... Yeah, verb works okay in the front. But I mean, we 
put a loop in, you can use it. Um, David Gilmore doesn't use effects loops. Um, yeah, I have some King Darko. You've asked that a few times. I'm sorry. Um, Nick, it's a good point. It would be more convenient um, to have the reverb on board. But it costs money. And, you know, it's one of those things. Plus, it just it degrades the sound. There's no way to avoid it. Um, I can't, you know, like Fender had to make deluxes and supers and twins and everybody all their reverb amps they have the reverb channel and their non-reverb channel which is basically the same exact amp same exact preamp only one has reverb one doesn't and they did that because people said this doesn't sound as good uh, studio guys don't want reverb stage guys don't want reverb um, so Fender had to do that just to cover that, so it's sort of not really worth it sometimes. I mean, I get it. I understand. I understand. I understand. It's just not what we do. You know, we make a very finely tuned, pristine signal through our amp that's going through com quality components, and it's sort of counterintuitive to then run it through a spring. Um, so... You know, there you have it. You might have to plug in a pedal. Maybe I'll just make the answer with a little shelf in the back where you can permanently mount some pedals. Put it in the loop. Draws power off the head. That's a good idea, isn't it? Um, just a little pull-out shelf. Yeah, with channel switching, it does change. Um... But um, that's a good idea. I like that. So, gosh, man, you guys are shooting questions at me. Let's go to um, one of the other things uh, that was brought up earlier. A Strymon Pocket. It wouldn't be hard at all to run pedal power. Hey, Cart. See you soon, buddy. Yeah, come by and see the new shop anytime. You're welcome. Of course. Um, someone had brought up... Um, well, let's, let's do this. So we talked about price versus quality. There's just a floor. There's no way to get around it. Um, uh, the little Elvis would know, or a similar 6V6 amp with just volume and tone. Well, the Tupelo is pretty similar. Uh, lightweight amps. If you're going to put ceramic magnet speakers and steel transformers in them it's going to be hard to make them lightweight there's kind of a floor there also there's no way to make a 10 pound amp with tubes and transformers and speakers in it it's <clears throat> laws of physics i'd love to and that's why guys try those toroidal transformers the round ones you know uh they cost nothing they're really cheap um but uh they don't work very well and they don't sound right do I even lift what are you talking about um, Justin Magana says why does everyone want a lightweight amp how old are you guys oh we're old Justin um, we're very old so let's see low wattage clean amps easy to do there's not much market for it um, <clears throat> um, I don't really I don't uh, that I could make any money just doing a big clean amp I mean there's a lot of guys that want it but it's not enough to warrant making it and there's a few companies that just do clean amps and they do a good job and they don't sell a whole lot. Uh, we talked about attenuators. A one watt amp. Someone had mentioned they had an amp that has preamp tubes as the output stage. And they really like the volume, but it doesn't sound very good. Okay. Um, 
again, it's sort of the cake and eat it too thing. We're kind of right there. Uh, yeah, you know, taking the trim out of an amp isn't going to save a whole lot of money. That, that might reduce the retail price by about 50 bucks. Um, 99% of the cost in a guitar amp are the transformers, the speakers, the cabinet, and the chassis. Um, the circuitry is it costs money, but it's not the cost, you know. So pulling a feature off an amp won't really save that much money. It's kind of weird. If you ever saw the bill of materials on an amp, you'd be astonished. The transformers are by far the most expensive part. You know, like my cheapest transformer set on the blue line costs over 250 bucks. And that's because I'm buying 50 at a time. If you were to buy one of our transformer sets retail, they'd be about $900. Um, so. I don't remember saying that it was expensive to implement. I mean, there's a tube and some caps and resistors. Um, that's why we took it off of the London Pro just to be able to cut the price down but it's about fifty sixty dollars savings is what you get as far as tremolos go it's very expensive most people use an opto trim which costs about three dollars um, doing a vertical 212 slant cap no nah, I haven't really there's not much demand for it um, you can take our 212 and turn it on its side. I don't get a lot of requests for that. I mean, there's a lot of neat ideas I'd like to do, but I, I got to be realistic. If I'm going to make one, I need to make a hundred. And I can't make a hundred of them and leave them sitting around. You know, if I were to build one off cabinets, they would be really expensive. Um, you know, I, I can only sell them at the price I do because I make them. Uh, in bulk. If you go out and make a cabinet yourself, it costs a ton. It costs a ton. Uh, so I hate to be a wet blanket. I mean, there's just some of these. I know these. Every time I throw questions out, that's what it always revolves around. To I want a little tiny amp that sounds great and it doesn't cost anything. It's like, well, I think everyone's trying to do that. Um, that's not really our thing. Uh, I wish I could. Trust me, if I could figure that one out, I'd be the richest guy in the music business. But, um, you know, wood weighs what it weighs. Uh, ceramic magnet speakers weigh what they weigh, and steel transformers weigh what they weigh. They're, and there's no way to make them tiny and get good performance out of it. You found anything that you never want to put in your amps that say some other companies are doing? Ah, I can't answer that. Um, that wouldn't be correct for me to say. Nick asks, if 65 amps built the best AC30 it could make, which model and modern parts would you use? Well, I'd make them the way we make our stuff now. My favorite version of the AC30 is the mid-64 which had the Woden transformers on it <clears throat> and a blend of Wema caps and mustard caps. But I'd use Mercury trannies. Those are the most accurate ones I've seen. Um, and we already used the best parts. I'd build, use those. But you can just go buy. Yeah, no, I want the top boost. I like the top boost. Um, <clears throat> just go buy an AC30. Trust me. If I were to just go and build AC30s like that, they would cost four or five thousand um, dollars, which is about what you can go buy an AC30 for. You can buy a really good AC30 for less than that. It just needs to be recovered. It needs new Tolex and grill cloth. You can probably go find one for two grand. I could never build you an AC30 for two grand. So. Um, uh, what speakers do you recommend with your 412 cab paired with producer EL34 head uh, G12H30s you know I'd mix um, 
Uh, I'd mix speakers in a 412, mix H's and M's or H's with Alnico's. I'd keep the H, you know, either way. Uh, if you want a more vintage sound, load it up with M's. It'll sound good. So, Stratocaster Mojo says, I know you guys use NOS Allen Bradley resistors. Do you guys use any old mustard caps? No, we use the Sozos. We use the Sozos, which I think are the best facsimile of the old mustard cap. In some senses, they're better. They got more frequency response. Well, Pink Paisley, take care. I'm sorry your chat window's not working. Uh... Yeah. Cool. All right. So NOS tubes. Um, someone had brought up NOS tubes earlier. Wanted to know my opinions on them. Um, I don't have a guitar here, Rick. So I'd have to run outside and get one. Um, uh, NOS tubes are good and bad. Um, I think if you have an old amp, uh, it's a smart way to go. If you want it to sound like it was designed to sound. Um, you put modern tubes in an old amp, it, it doesn't sound the way that it sounded back then and vice versa. You take a brand new amp like ours, because we don't copy any circuits, so my amps are optimized for new tubes. It, it may sound better with NOS tubes, but it won't sound the same. Uh, better is up to you. Sometimes it will. I think for preamp tubes, you'll always have an improvement with NOS tubes, even poles. Um, you know, it's uh, it's uh, the preamp tubes are the, the worst of the modern tubes. Some of the power, modern power tubes are pretty good. I think JJ EL thirty or EL eighty fours and JJ six V sixes are really good. Honestly, no kidding. They don't last near as long as the old tubes, but they sound really good. And I think mainly because the JJ 6v6 to me looks like a 6L6. They put in a little bottle. But, um, yeah. It would, um, uh oh. There's the loud phone. Private caller. I can't answer that. Definitely cannot. So, um, private caller. Are match tubes preferred to be used in your amps? Yeah, Sean, you, you want to use match power tubes no matter what. Um, they'll always work better. But our amps are cathode bias, so they auto bias to a degree. They can't take tubes that are wildly different and make them bias up. Um, Um, but yeah, please do that. No, I haven't played guitar yet in the new shop. I suck. We're, we were just a little bit before here. I was, we're trying to set up the new place. And my old sound booth is on the other end of the shop. And I'm probably gonna have to move the broadcast over there so we can do that. Um, I'm sorry. I know, it's been eight weeks, and I'm embarrassed every time I go on and I can't play guitar. Um, caller wants to clean your carpets. Okay. You can clean my carpets. Um, Bob says, Bob in New Jersey, is it okay to swap 12X7s for 5751s? Yeah, that's fine. I read somewhere that some circuits needed the 12x7 and don't like lesser gain. What matters is whether you like it or not. If you like it, it's fine. Totally fine. Um, but uh, what do you think of the Tone King new hand wired amps with the stacked circuit boards? I'm not familiar with those, Nick. I haven't seen them. I don't know anything about them. Sorry. I don't really look at other people's amps, to be honest with you. I probably should, but I don't. All right, so let's get down. Okay, so irrational stuff aside, I can't make a little tiny amp that you can play next to your television. 
Um, I can't make a lightweight amp uh, that's ultra lightweight, and I definitely can't um, make an amp for 500 bucks. Hang on one second. I'll be right back. Hold on. Sorry guys, people are cranking up music out there. Um, so, I'm sorry, people are turning up really bad music out there. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's almost lunchtime. I gotta leave here shortly, but, so anyway, what do I wanna to get to? So let's take the crazy stuff out. Um, the unrealistic things, you know, I'm not going to sell you a dragster that you can drag, take your kids to school in. Um, what are we doing? What are we not doing that you wish we were? That's what I really want to know. I want to like hear directly from you guys. Because I can do kind of all sorts of things, but let's talk about an amp that most people would want because we do like three versions of the L84 stuff we have two different 66 amps um, actually three three 66 amps all very different uh, four if you count the Monterey we're not really making it anymore um, we got an EL34 amp out and we got a 6L6 amp out um, Les Fender said, I know you brought up rack stuff. Uh, there's not much market for that anymore. Um, uh, but what is it that, what is it, I wish there were, I mean, it'd be easy to build. I wouldn't have to use a wooden cabinet, it'd be great. Um, what is it that you want us to do that we're not doing? Um, is it higher gain stuff? Clean headroom, Nick says. Yeah, you don't get clean headroom out of 20 watt amps. Um, Redline Stone Pony. Okay. Because the only thing we're not doing right now is um, the higher gain stuff. We don't do the heavier sounding gear. Um, and I can do that. It just it's another tube. It's more wiring. It's more caps. It's more resistors. Um, I mean, I don't mind high gain amps. They're kind of fun. I just don't play them. But um, we can certainly, you know, do like a ripped version of some of our other amps. Some tubes don't get along with high gain, like EL84s and 6V6s don't really like high gain preamps, but PCB amp with a compressor, yeah. Yeah, Steve, I mean, the producer's got shit loads of gain. Um, high gain with a great clean sound, you kind of want both, huh? That would be the producers do that. Yeah, Nick, we are getting more over into Britain. Yeah, I could change it to 75 amps from 65 to a high gain line. More trebly, higher gain things. Uh, yeah, more producer amps. That's kind of what I'm thinking I want to do is do this high current, low voltage thing. Uh, Mix X2 just... Uh, yeah, I don't want to make a deluxe. Just go buy a deluxe. Do an eBay search right now for Blackface Deluxe and see how many you see. Um, and they're not expensive. They're cheaper than what I could sell them to you for. Supro. Yeah, I like Supros. 
Here, let's just for fun. New tab. eBay.com. Yeah, the Empire's got tons of gain too. It's a really different sound. Uh, black Face Deluxe. I should probably put in Fender. Let's do Fender. And then I'm going to exclude minus sign reissue. Let's see what we get. 1965 Fender Blackface Deluxe. All original, unmolested condition. $12.99 or best offer. Why do you want me to make you a Deluxe? <laughs> it's the first one here. $12.99. 1965. This is it. This is the Primo Deluxe. Um, here. Let me, I'll put the link on here right now. There you go. Even if this amp were completely messed up, you could get it working perfectly for about 200 bucks. Oh, let me turn on links. Hang on a second. Allow links. There you go. There you go. I don't have any money to buy an amp today, but this is an all original Blackface Deluxe. And just like the guy says, I'm looking at the pictures, this is in good shape. $12.99 or best offer. Somebody offer the guy 900 bucks. Uh, yeah, the American side of the producer gets a really good fendery sound. So does the Ventura. So does the Tupelo. Uh, vintage 1965 Blackface Deluxe, $14.95. I could not sell you one of those for $14.95, making it with... when they're all over eBay. And this guy's got one for $21.99. Still, that's a pretty good deal. Class A, Laney does a 50 watt amp on with power valves and series. What do you think of that idea? Eh, I don't know. How's it sound? Is it robust? Shankenstein front end. With 6v6s and a master voltage, yeah, we could do that. Um, but I mean, let's do this. Uh, Marshall Plexi, excluding reissues. Fifteen hundred bucks. Mar Plexis everywhere. Two grand. There's the white Tolex ones. Are ex expensive. Half stack, seven grand. Oh, that's getting kind of up there. Twenty-four hundred dollars. Super base plexi, vintage one, from Canada or best offer. I mean, you know. There's a bunch. I think a lot of these are reissues there. Marshall 412 PA cabinets, a pair of them. 
eight hundred bucks. That's pretty good. Yeah. So there you go. Shankenstein is an app that I made for John Shanks. Um, Nick67 says, how about a blend control for both clean and dirty channels? We have that on the London Pro. Yeah, it's a custom app I did for a studio guy. It's 110 watts. It's four KT77s. Had a modified Showman front end with Partridge style transformers. So it was kind of a high watt and a dual Showman mixed together. And uh, it was big. Deathride69 bought that, who's on here a lot. Um, he bought that from me. It's way too much power. When we were testing that amp, I bought a wireless because I couldn't stand to be around it. It was louder than hell. Louder than hell. Uh, to placate the bedroom volume crowd, you could build a 65 ISO cab and have them mic it into a board and studio. <laughs> Why don't you just go play in your garage? Um, that's a hell of a lot of stuff to do just so you can play guitar in your bedroom. Just get a pod. Seriously, an ISO cab and then mic it and then a board and into studio monitors. Do you think that's gonna sound better than an Axe FX? Chell says, how about designing an amp like the train wrecks, pushing the power tubes first? That's kind of what all of our amps are. They're not train wreck circuits, but we get most of our distortion from the phase inverter in the power section like a, like a, uh, like a train wreck. So you're, it's a good point. I like that. Fonzaro says, right, got it, a dumble, no one makes them anymore. Uh, yeah, that stuff's loud, man. These guys are wanting to, they're complaining that our 12 and 15 watt amps are too loud, and I'm going to make a 100 watt amp. So, would I compare and contrast the Ventura and the Tupelo? Yeah, sure, they're very different circuits and transformers and everything. Uh, the Ventura started out as being the color channel from our London going into a pair of 6v6s. Um, and then we added a second tube in there for a dirty sound because the, the EF86 wasn't really able to push the 6v6s into distortion. Whereas the Tupelo is two 12AX7s and a cathode follower and much different sound. The Tupelo sounds a little more like... Uh, like, uh, you know, brown face fender, early black face stuff, and the, excuse me, the Ventura is very Tweedy sounding. More of a 50s kind of fender sound. And really nice. Excuse me, I'm stretching. Ooh. HMS Hood says, in the studio, what do you mean? Is there a projected price range for the PCB series? I'm going to try to keep it around, you know, like a thousand to twelve hundred bucks. Could you ever get Richie Sambora in your office? Maybe. He wouldn't come and do this show, though. This is too low rent for him. So there's a Soho head in Britain for a thousand pounds, about sixteen hundred bucks. Well, that's pretty good. Uh, Chris Okinki, can I get John Bon Jovi? No. Uh, what about a tube germanium hybrid version of the Color Boost? Uh, it takes a lot of electricity to run a tube to do it well. Have you considered selling a 65 amp kit? No. Uh, I've had that question before. 
I think that's kind of dangerous. Um, Beyonce. Now, now we're talking. Now we're talking. So, um, yeah, Depp will be here next week. Um, so, uh, so what I'm getting is you guys want a little more flexibility. Some of you guys want some more gain. Um, you know, on our PCB amps, we'll have more functionality. It, it's hard to do that on a hand-wired amp. You, you run out of space really fast doing a hand-wired amp. And you get where the labor is just incredible. You know, a printed circuit board takes 80% of the labor out. And that's one of the big costs in the amp. It's as much or more than the parts. And, you know, we have pretty decently paid guys here because they're really highly skilled. These aren't just little old ladies wiring stuff together. And we have, you know, master builders. Um, so, you know, it takes them 8 to 12 hours to get an amp strung up at a certain amount of money. That adds up really, really fast. Master built by D. Oh, you don't want me to build it. I build amps like Jethro Bodine. I got smart guys to do that. I can build, but it's not. I'm kind of sloppy. No, you can't please everybody. I'm fine with that. I know that. I ask these questions. We just got to weed out the unrealistic stuff. Those are the things. There's certain things you just can't do. Um, I would love to offer a really kick-ass tube amp that weighed 20 pounds. You could play it next to your television in your bedroom. Who wants to play in their bedroom? Seriously, do you guys want to play in your bedroom? Um, I've never sat in my bedroom and played electric guitar. I had acoustic. Um, but the... Are there really guys that want to play in their bedroom? Yeah, Josh, that's true. With the PCB uh, amp, you could theoretically add a color boost on board and an additional gain stage besides the standard boost. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you have a life. <laughs> that's funny. Even seen Jack White string a pickup on the porch. Yeah, yeah, I saw that movie. I just don't know that that's... Again, it's like I want a dragster that so I can take it to the grocery store. Um, I don't know. I don't think that's a big part of the market. Um, no, no, you don't need a rehearsal studio, but you're playing electric guitar. I mean, it makes noise. Um, for the 60 years that people have been making electric guitars, um, no one's been able to make something that quiet. It's kind of tough. Honestly, if you want to play that quiet, I really recommend a Line 6 or an Axe FX or a Kemper or something like that. Oh, I've got a little... One of those little Vox Brian May amps that I have in my living room, it's great. But even that, I can't really play along with the television on it. I mean, my guitar itself is louder than the amp when you're playing along with the TV. Um, you know what I mean? Like that quiet. I mean, I sit, I have a Strat laying on the sofa at home. You know, my daughters and my wife love to watch American Idol. I sit around and play with all the songs, and it's fine I can hear myself great if I were to amplify that even more I, I would be too loud for the television um, my pay said I hope that the four-wheel drive doesn't get stuck in a Safeway parking lot I don't know what that means um, what do I think about buffers on long line runs if you need it uh, your pal uh, if you need it yeah that could work. I use an 11 rack to go back to my London. Okay. Yeah, that'll work. Very cool. But you see what I mean? Like, there's the laws of physics. Like, to play in a house where no one can hear you, that's so quiet. 
that it's almost the same volume as just playing an electric guitar acoustically. What about fluffers on porn sets? Well, I think it just depends on the situation. You know, if it's like take 16, man can get tired. You know what I'm saying? But I get that question a lot. Like, I want to play in my bedroom. Like, I don't understand that. You know what I mean? Like, just playing the guitar acoustically already makes noise. Um, how much louder does it need if you're in your bedroom? Les Fenderson, are you trying to grow into a new segment or create a new segment? Like they say, B-school segmentation, segmentation. Uh, yeah, a little bit. Um, I mean, I got a ton of uh, good ideas that I want to try to implement that I think are useful. Not just like, here's a new product, check it out. But I mean, I think there's some things that are missing on the market um, that I think would fill in a gap. Um, you know, it's kind of normal, I think. So, how are the ads been? Are we seeing ads? But I mean, you know, you're not going to get the sound of a pair of EL34s in your bedroom. That's just not going to work. I thought about making a little tiny amp where EF86s are the output tubes because they're, they're pentodes. Um, they would technically work. KT120 powered bass amp to rival. Ah, uh, Troy, that's a great idea. We tried the KT120s and the Rocket 88s for Dead Sarah. They blow up. They're not ready yet. We blew them all up at 480 volts, and they're supposed to take 700 volts. So, well, maybe my payment got processed, and maybe the ads aren't working. Um, what about Canadian dealers going into the major oh, Long and McQuaid's? Uh, yeah, we got to do that. We just got to do all the Canadian inspections, which are really strict. And so that costs a lot of money. It takes time. So right now, Long and McQuaid's, we self-certify. The amps are safe. We've never had any problems with them. All that kind of stuff. But um, <clears throat> we don't have the official certification yet. So... McSex Stooges 5s, I put my London Pro and Ventura in a sound treated closet, mic them, run them through my interface into the Mac, put their master voltages on 4, and make the volumes tolerable for everyone. Man, that's, a, that's cool. It's a lot of work. Um, a lot of work. Yes, Nick, I am going to be doing studio demos. Uh, you get a nice representation of recorded sound, McSex Stooges. Yeah, I'm sure you do. Um, but it's like a several thousand dollar proposition to, I think for most people to do that, you got to buy Mac, you got to treat your closet, you got to buy microphones and preamps. Um, what is the Greta? I don't know that. Oh, you record a lot. Okay, well, that's pretty useful. <clears throat> I think most guys really just want to go upstairs and play guitar without pissing off their wife. To which I say, you married wrong. <laughs> you married kind of poorly. Guys, just start a band and kill people's faces at the club. Sounds better, free drinks. Yeah, there you go. Oh, the Fender thing. I haven't seen this. Let me see this really quick. Oh, right. I saw those at NAMM, but I never hooked into one. 259, boy. How about that? 
128T7 for an output tube. That could be cool. That could be very cool. Yeah, I've thought about doing that. Because um, we have a ton of... My deaf girlfriend doesn't mind. Uh, we have a ton of EF86s laying around here that won't work as a preamp tube, but they'll probably work great as a little bitty tiny power tube. So like a little quad of EF86s. That's funny, Les Fenderson. I like that. Oh, I'm sticking with you, man. It's all good. I understand these desires, but I mean, I just got to keep you guys grounded in reality about what's possible. You know, I want to marry Heidi Klum and not have to work. <laughs> you know. Okay. I want to sleep with young girls all the time and not take care of my body and not make any money. Um, probably not realistic. Uh, it's perfect for bedroom tube overdrive cheap. Yeah, that's cool. I want to live in a... Sing it hard, sing it well, says Saw Dead Sarah last week. Anything in the current lineup that sounds like the Rocket... Yeah, you know, the Rocket 88 is just a giant Soho. It's a Soho with KT-88s in it. I want a supermodel girlfriend that's into small penises and fat guys. Yeah, that's it. Um, if we were grounded in reality, we would be we wouldn't be guitar players in the first place. Yeah, that's a good point, Bob. Um, a little speaker's not going to sound big. A little bitty amp's not going to sound big. There's no way to fake it. I mean, I get it. I mean. Playing my 69 Super Lead Marshall is a blast, but I can't do it anywhere. Uh, the Rocket 88 we just made for artists. Uh, sing it hard, sing it well. I don't put them in any stores because they're just too loud. They'll never sell them. Uh, so is the Royal Albert already considered rare? Yeah, we haven't really been making it for a few years. Uh, mainly because the world supply of KT-77s went to shit. I, I pulled it because I just didn't feel good selling it. How loud is a Rocket 88? Uh, well, it's about 80 watts, uh, but it'll get close to 130 decibels. Viagra would be a good amp name. That's a great name for your 6L6 amp. Just like that girl, that, hey Jodacaster, welcome. Uh, that girl that's on Modern Family, Sophia Viagra. <laughs> All right, fellas, it's 1.30. I need to go eat some lunch. I'm stretching because I'm tired, and I'm sorry that it was a weird show. You just mentioned your old Marshall. Have you ever put your master voltage into an old vintage amp? Uh, it doesn't work very well with grid-biased amps. It only works on... Uh, <coughs> it only works on cathode bias amps. Because on a grid bias amp, I have to be adjusting the bias voltage at the same time. And that doesn't move. There's not a linear relationship there. You know, when you drop the voltage, the grid bias can go in several different directions. Um, we tried it. I couldn't make it work very well. That would have been a year research project, I think. Uh, there will be pedals. I don't have any incredible information today, though. Well, thank you, Frank Shotoffer. Good to see you. Given the past and present 65 line, I'm sure whatever you come up with next will be great. Uh, thank you. Well, we're trying. We're trying. We're trying hard. It's hard just to keep up, just making gear, you know. The, the extra time that I have to put into the show is hard enough to find right now. Thank you, Rockabilly12. You have a good lunch, too. All you guys in Europe, good night. Schlaf gut. All of those things. I will play guitar. I'm going to try to play guitar next week. I can't guarantee anything, but I'll try. Seriously, Dan. Thanks, man. Have a great week. Oh, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Uh, 
Chris Okinki, Belter Ustin. Okay, Belter Ustin. Next week, next week. Thank you, Josh, Fonzarelli, Guitar Dom, HMS Hood, all the Franks, T2 Ellis. Uh, HMS Hood, Chris, Blaine, King Darko, Nick S. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it very much. Jay Norby, hey, you've been lurking all day. Dirty 59, McSex Stooges 5, hugs. Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you, man. Frank, we'll see you soon, buddy. Thank you. Uh, Knut Berga, have a good night. Hope things are well in Norway. We're doing good. We're doing good. I'm frustrated, though. Let's make it better. Okay, well, thanks for answering those questions. I appreciate it sincerely. And Justin, I will call you. Bob, thanks for coming by. And uh, Bob, don't you have a good Hugo Chavez joke already? Bob Dragic calls me and had a joke about the English king they found buried under a parking lot. So they didn't even have to do DNA testing because he still had his valet stub. He was buried under a parking lot. I don't know if that makes sense or not to you. But um, Nick67. No, but I did make a discovery about vegetarian food. What was that, Bob? Here it comes. Bob's really funny, by the way. You should know this. Bob has an extremely developed sense of humor. Thanks, Rick. Bonds, really. It tastes better if you put bacon on it. <laughs> yeah, good point. Well, you know, pigs and cows and chickens don't eat meat, so I don't see what the problem is. Um, anyway, fellas, thank you very much. We'll see you next week. I'll try to be a little more alive. We'll have something more to talk about. And... I uh, will talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.